In today's video, we're gonna be experimenting with a new technique on adding texture to resin. Now this technique is either gonna be a really cool success or we're just gonna make a mess and it'll end up in a disaster. So I hope you guys have a cup of coffee or tea and let's get started. Today we're gonna to be making some resin coasters and I also have here a plastic bag that I got from the grocery store. I actually got this in the produce section. It's one of those bags they have so you can put your apples, your bananas, whatever it is that you're buying. And this is what's gonna give us our texture in our resin. Now I will explain a bit more about it later once we get to that part, but first I wanna go ahead and pour our first layer. We will be doing this project in layers. It's very similar to my other video where I was adding the soap bubbles to create that texture. Um, each layer is a different step on achieving that final result that we're looking for. So for our first layer, I just went in with some clear resin. I'm using Let's Resin Epoxy for this project mixed with some silver leaf. I thought the silver leaf would add some nice extra detail to our resin coaster just in case our experiment doesn't work out. By the way, I did change the plan slightly. I decided to only make one coaster because since this is my first time doing this technique, I didn't want to waste too much resin in case it doesn't work out. Then I poured the resin into the mold just enough to cover the middle part and set it aside to cure. Eight hours later. Okay guys, so we're at the point of the process where I can go ahead and add our plastic bag. Now this resin hasn't fully cured yet, it's still really, really soft, but I can touch it and it doesn't feel sticky or tacky, so that means it can handle the next layer. I have here some already pre-mixed resin, which I'm going to pour a layer of, and then we're going to add our plastic bag. Now this is the layer that's either going to make this project a success or a fail. So fingers crossed that it's a success. So let's first pour our layer, our next layer, and we want to do it slowly so no air bubbles are in there. And then we're going to lay our plastic sheet on top and pray that uh, no air bubbles get trapped in there either. So I think that's enough resin. And now I'm going to use a popsicle stick let me just quickly grab one and we're going to just push the resin along the edges and over. Okay, so the resin is as even as possible and now it's time to add the plastic bag. And I think what I'm going to do, just because I don't want to trap any air bubbles in there, is I'm going to start at one corner. I'm going to start at one corner and slowly press it down and try to avoid as many air bubbles as possible. So let's start on this corner here and just gently tap it down. And there we go. So now what we want to do is we want to scrunch up the plastic bag with that resin underneath. And then if this works properly, it will cure with that scrunch and it will give us the texture that we're looking for. Okay, I think that's it. I'm gonna leave it as it is right now. And now all we have to do is let it sit and cure and I'll be back in the morning. Before I go to bed, I just wanted to give you guys a close up of what the plastic looks like on the resin and the texture looks really, really cool. And this is actually really promising. So it's gonna be interesting to see what it looks like in the morning. I have had to add these resin molds along the edges of the mold to keep the plastic in place because I noticed that as I was leaving, the plastic was lifting. So I'm just using these random molds to keep the plastic sheet in place. But yeah, I'm really excited and I can't wait until the morning. See you guys in the morning. Good morning guys. It's now the next day. It's early morning and I couldn't wait. I'm in my craft room first thing and I'm here to see how our project is going. 
So I'm happy to report that the resin did cure with the texture from the plastic bag when we were scrunching it up last night. You can see all that lumpy goodness. <laughs> and um, now the real question is, will this plastic bag come off the resin? Another great thing I saw is we don't have that much spillage. I guess I didn't put enough resin for it to spill. We do have this small area here, but that's an easy cleanup because it'll just pop off the resin. Okay guys, so now it's time. I'm so nervous about this part because not all plastic does come off resin. Um, so let's see. Okay, three, two, one. Oh my God, it's working. It's working. Oh, yes, it worked. <laughs> it worked. Yes, it came off. Just look at that. Oh, yeah. We can go ahead and do the next step of the process. There is a bit of cleanup. Okay, so there is a bit of cleanup here that we will have to do. Um, so then when we put that next layer of resin, it will cure properly, but that's okay. We can work with that. And yeah, it worked. Look at that. Look at that. Look at all that lumpy goodness. <laughs> I am so happy, you guys. I missed some sleep last night just because I couldn't stop thinking, what would I do if the resin, um, if the plastic hadn't come, not, hadn't come off? And I was starting to get worried. But then I was like, no, you know what? Just go to sleep. That will be the that will be a problem we'll deal with in the morning. And just look at that. It came off. Okay, so I'm going to get set up for the next step, which is adding our mica powders. I will be using the Let's Resin Silver Blue Powder, which is from the Let's Resin Metallic Pearl Pigment Powder set. This is one of my absolute favorites. It's such a beautiful color. I actually made a domino set with this pigment, and they turned out so beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead, get my brush, get my gloves, and let's do the next step. Now for the third and final layer, I went in with my brush and dusted the resin with my mica as well as I could. When dusting micas on resin or molds, you want to make sure you get a good even coat on because if you don't, it can't show and it's one of those techniques that can be hard to fix once the resin is cured. Then to seal the mica powder in the resin, I went in with another layer of resin and this time I mixed in some really pretty pearly white mica powder that has a blue shift to it. I thought it was perfect because it would match the blue mica powder I put on the resin initially. By the way, if you guys have a hard time dissolving micas in resin, one pro tip is to mix the micas with a little bit of 99% alcohol first to dissolve it and then pour that into your epoxy resin. But you do have to be careful when mixing alcohol with resin. It can make your resin more brittle or it may make the resin not cure properly. Okay guys, it's demolding time. Now I do see there is a bit of cleanup I'll have to do. There are a few sharp points, so I will have to sand that down, but I will do that off camera on my own time. I have no plans to sell this. This is a test piece, so there is no rush. Oh, there's a little sneak peek of what it's gonna look like. And yeah, so let's get to it and let's see how this turned out. Oh wow, look at that. Just look at how pretty that is. Oh, look at that. Let me give you guys a close up. I'll definitely be doing this technique again. It's so pretty. And I also wanna try it with different molds to see what it looks like with a shallow mold because it does seem that you do need a deeper mold to get this effect. 
But wow, just look at how pretty that is. Oh look, even the little air bubbles that did get trapped in there look super pretty. They look like little pearls. So what do we all think? Be sure to comment down below whether or not you've tried this technique. And if you haven't, will you? I highly recommend trying this. It gives resin such a sophisticated look and it's really, really pretty. I will be doing this again and yeah. I hope you guys learned something from this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a big fat thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.